Welcome to Rift Corner. I got Jerry Branham back. Today we're going to talk about pro hormones, something that everybody needs to know something about because there's so many on the market, Jerry, right? Yeah, there's a lot of them on the market. And we got to know what we're getting and what we're yeah. taking and what it's doing. Like yeah. I just told you, I've been taking one for two weeks and I showed it to Jerry. And for the past week, I've been feeling like I have the flu. I've had a headache. I've had no, no appetite at all. Stomach's loose. I just feel like really lethargic. And we boil it down to that could be the problem. It could be the problem, yeah. But let's let's go a little bit very brief history of the uh, of these pro hormones. The original pro hormone that you've heard of DHEA, right? Sure. DHEA was originally introduced in the 80s and it was taken from a thing called Mexican yam. Mm -hmm. The FDA pulled it from the market in the late 80s because it wasn't standardized. In other words, each bottle of DHA had a different, you know, each tablet, you didn't know how much DHA was in there. Right. You know, so they pulled it off. Then you had something called the Dietary Health and Supplementation Act, I think it was called, 1994. And what this did, this kind of transformed the entire supplement industry. It, it, it created a situation where it was now under the, uh, it shifted the burden of proof from the person selling a supplement to the FDA. In other words, yeah. if you put, came out with a supplement, you know, the FDA had to prove it was dangerous, other, uh, otherwise you could sell it, right? right? And also, if you could show that the supplement, and this is where pro-hormones come in, if it's found anywhere in a natural source, it was legal. So this opened the door for the pro-hormone industry. The first one was called, you might, uh, you might, other than DHA, DHA came back on the market, and DHA was kind of like, uh, you know, not that great. It didn't really work that well. Right. You know, it tended to go more to estrogen in men. In women, it was great. It always went into testosterone. It does something else, I don't know if I have time to talk about it. It does something very interesting, but maybe for another time. But uh, the point is, the first one was, you remember Mark McGuire, the home run race? Right. They found, uh, he admitted taking a pro, popular pro-hormone. This was the first uh, one after the age. It was called androstendione. Right. Androstendione is in the testosterone synthesis pathway. It comes <coughs> after DHA. So it, it's a much more direct conversion to testosterone. But, but it turns out that's what it is on paper. In the body, what they found when they tested young men who were involved in weight training, it tended to stimulate more estrogen than testosterone. So they went back to the drawing board. To make a long story short, they came out all the other 4AD and all this and that, you know. And what happened was uh, some, most of them didn't work. They either, you know, became testosterone. I mean, they became estrogen, or they just didn't do a damn thing. But the interesting thing, and this is the really pathetic part, is most of them produced, get this, the side effects of oral steroids without the muscle building effects. So you get the acne, you get the hair loss, yeah. you get the prostate problems, but no muscle growth. So, you know, it was kind of pathetic, right? Yeah, yeah. In the meantime, you go on the internet forums and, and these guys are all raving about the muscle growth. That's the placebo effect, that's the bro science. It was all nonsense, right? But then, then around, I think this was around maybe 2000 or so, 2001, a couple of guys got a hold of a book. It, you know, it's been around for years. In fact, I always forget that it's called uh, uh, Anabolic and Androgenic Agents. It was written by a guy named Julius Vida, V-I-D-A. It was written in 1969. What is the book? The book, it, it, you see, what happens is steroids, anabolic steroids started to go into big development in the early <coughs> 60s. All the drug companies, they developed, God knows, maybe thousands of steroids. Most of them didn't make the market for two reasons. Why? Because either they were too toxic or B, they were no more effective than existing steroids like testosterone, right. DECA. So, they, so the drug companies say, hey, look, if we're not going to make money, screw it. Right, so they, they just left it in drug limbo. But this guy, Vita, he cataloged them in this book. And they sat in this book in dusty shelves and medical libraries for years. But then a couple of guys who knew about steroid chemistry dug out the book. They went through the book and they, and they took out a couple of the old steroids. And they, and they put them in supplement form. And they called them pro-hormones. But what are they? They're old, discarded steroids that even the drug companies didn't want to deal with because they either were too toxic or they weren't better. Now, let me let me talk about one of them. Let me, where is that uh, thing I just want to tell you? There's one of them. I'm just going to focus on one because, because you see, I have a sheet here I bought. Yeah, you got like 500. Yeah, you, you can't, guys can't see this. I don't know if you could see it, but I highlighted it. This is from a medical journal called Hepatology where they, 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 they have a database of all these supplements that can cause severe liver problems. The ones in yellow, this goes on for sheet after sheet. These are all current pro-hormone uh, supplements on the market now. All of these have caused liver, liver damage or severe liver inflammation, right? I'm not even gonna name all, but I'm gonna focus on this one, which is a very famous one called Superdrol. Mm -hmm. Now, what is Superdrol? Superdrol is an old steroid. Remember we were talking, yeah. this was also developed in the early 60s. 
it was called methosterone. Yes. Methosterone, right? Now, what happened was, again, in the, in the initial animal toxicity studies, they noticed that the animals, it literally caused, um, right off the bat, it caused severe liver inflammation and it raised the liver enzymes of the animals. They said, screw this crap. But they went back to, the, these are steroid chemists. So they went back and they manipulated the molecule a little bit. They did what they call 17 alpha ankylation. So they, they made it where it's kind of like a little bit more tolerable to the body. And it was re-released as a famous steroid, which you probably heard of, called Masterone. Sure. Masterone is basically a clean version of Superdrol. That's the interesting part. So Superdrol is a dirty version of Masterone, right? Masterone's pretty good. Right, Masterone, Masterone's very good. I mean, yeah. it actually, it's a DHT derivative. Right. Now what that means is that it can't convert into estrogen. It doesn't hold any water. It has a reputation as a cutting drug. Right. Right? Right. So, so, so the thing is, uh, there's been a, uh, at least four studies, and I've written this myself, of bodybuilders. This is not some schmuck off the street. These are bodybuilders who've taken Superdrol, and guess what? They didn't even, this is unusual, they didn't even exceed the dosage. They took the recommended amount, and, and three of them got severe liver inflammation. One of them got liver failure. That means he has to have a liver transplant or he dies. So that, that gives you uh, just one example of, of these, uh, these pro-hormones. And, and like I say, you know, you don't know the quality control. Uh, most of them, uh, the ones that worked, the, the, like this last generation, yeah. let's call them, remember most of them, unlike the first one, which were just analogs of natural androgens in the body, these last generation, most of them were old discarded steroids. And did they build muscle? You're damn right they build muscle because they were real steroids. Yeah, yeah. They weren't. They were real anabolic steroids. They just were never developed because of toxicity. So you were taking stuff that, that was basically a throwaway. You know what I'm saying? So what happened was the government eventually saw all these side effects showing up. And, you know, there was an Anabolic Steroid Control Act in 1990, basically went after regular anabolic steroids. It was signed by President Bush, right? Because of this, these new, uh, if you want to call them designer steroids or whatever, they, co Congress went back in 2004, they, they, didn't, they, uh, they passed an amendment to the ana original Anabolic Steroids Control Act, which went after these pro-hormones. It effectively removed the ones that are existing. No, not to worry. The steroid chem. Remember, this is a big industry. Mm -hmm. A lot of guys want this kind of testosterone. They want to get big. Right. So the steroid chemists went back. They went back to the Vita and other sources. They started manipulating the molecules, and that's where we are today. We have these again, these uh, these old steroids that you know they've been manipulated. So a lot of them don't even show up on drug tests. They're what they call designer steroids because right. they don't. They never really existed. They, right. they weren't even developed by drug companies. They're kind of manipulations of existing steroids. Now, as we speak, only about three weeks ago, Congress went back <laughs> with the recognition of these designer steroids. They said, okay, you know, they, they went around us, so we're going to we're gonna go back. They just passed the House of Representatives. There's a new law. It's getting ready to go to Senate. It's called the Designer Anabolic Steroid Control Act of 2014. Obama's going to sign it. It's going to take off the rest of the, uh, all these things that are that I showed, these things that are causing liver problems. They're all going to be pulled off the market, right? Now, here's the interesting part about this. This is really interesting. Guess what happened? And they, they've increased the, the penalty. If you get caught, after this drug is passed, if you get caught selling one of these designer steroid things, guess what? You get a, a $2.5 million fine or and or 10 years in prison. Oh boy. So let me tell you something. If you get caught selling this stuff now, you ain't going to go back in business because you're going to be in the pen. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to be like uh, bending down in the shower or whatever. You know. <laughs> so, so tell me the bottom line to them: should they take them or not? I, I, I definitely not. Okay. You know, let me tell you something, Rick. Normally, my, my position about government intervention is no. I don't like it. I don't like the idea of go of the government messing with. We want to take you know normal supplements. Right. No, I don't either. I, I mean, th this notion of making them drugs, which will of course you know boost sales for pharmaceutical, like the FDA and all that stuff. I'm, I'm dead set against that. You, you know, we're adults. We should have personal choice. The right. government should not decree exactly. what we want to take as far as supplements go. I make one exception to that rule, pro-hormones, because you know what? I think they're dangerous. Okay. I think that you know all of these things, I mean, like, look at this. Every one of these, all liver inflammation, possible liver failure. One guy supposedly got prostate cancer from one yeah. of them, which is hard to prove. You know, that's kind of iffy. Yeah. But I mean, I, I, I think, I, I don't recommend them to anybody. You know, there is ways of, of boosting testosterone. There's natural ways. 
I'll just mention them one off the bat. This stuff called Long Jack Tongat Ali. Have you heard of that? No. It's an herb from Malaysia. It seems to raise your testosterone, right? It, and I'm not, not going to lie to the to the listeners. It works best if you're already kind of on the low side. If you already have high testosterone, yeah. it's not going to do jack for you, literally. Yeah. But if you're like on a low side of testosterone, it'll give you a nice little boost. It really does. Yeah. It's good for older guys that have problems, you know, like you know, down there and that kind of stuff. Yeah. That's the only one I recommend at this okay. point. Where can we find your newsletter? You can find it applied. It's called. Applied Metabolics newsletter. It's at www.appliedmetabolics.com. I cover nutritional supplements. I cover ergogenic aids, including anabolic steroids, growth hormone, all that stuff. I have longevity research. I have exercise science, and I have general health articles, including like stuff like how to prevent cancer, how to prevent heart disease. Everything. I got something for everybody. There you go. Jerry Branham is here. He's talking. You guys gonna listen? Yeah. He knows what he's talking about. Go get his newsletter, read it, contribute to it, and you'll learn something for yourself. And you'll become a better bodybuilder for doing so. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Rick. Thanks for watching Rick's Corner. See you next time. It's RickDrayson.com. He is the equalizer, baby. See you next time.